Dear Diary, it's been a whirlwind start to life in London and at Arsenal, having to do plenty of work transfer-wise to make sure we could have a full squad registered for the Premier League. In saying that, the first 11 mostly picks itself, the only contentious areas may be being the wingbacks, and we are predicted to be right in the fight for the title. So hopefully we go off to a good start at home against Everton, under new manager Unai Emery, before a tough trip to take on Newcastle. Otherwise, the Tiki Taka style might be under the gun early. Until next time. Welcome to episode 80 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM and it's the first gameplay one with our new club in Arsenal FC and coming up today we play our first two games of the Premier League season, our first two games in charge and also the first two games I have played since the big winter update which did also include a bit of an update to the match engine as well and we take on Everton at home these days managed by Unai Emery after Mikel Arteta left them for our former club in Cardiff City and off the back of that a trip to St James's Park that could be quite a big game early on as we take on Newcastle United so if you're looking forward to this episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but yesterday we did join Arsenal and went through the transfer window up until the start of the season, so a lot did go on in that episode. If you missed that one, I recommend you check it out or leave it over in the top right corner. And it does mean that the squad is a little bit different looking to what it was when we did get here at the start of yesterday's episode. I say that in terms of the first 11, there is only one change with Moise Pelé coming in to that deep line playmaker role. He was our main signing. In hindsight, we should have actually got Khalid Al Bloshi from Cardiff, seeing as he was homegrown nation because that was quite a big hurdle that we did have to consider with a few of the transfers off the back of that one to make sure we could get a full complement of players registered for the Premier League this season but otherwise a few extra players down there on the bench the likes of Patino, Carvalho, Balea as a striker and also down below that the likes of Yakubu as well as a new backup in Maluccio and we should also have another Brazilian striker signing for us during the course of today's episode as well but there is what our first team does look like here at Arsenal for this upcoming season it is a very strong team with Ramsdale and goal Tomiyasu is the starting right back over Singo even though the game did suggest that Singo should be the starter according to attributes Tomiyasu is better for that role and the exact same case does apply with Kieran Tierney over Zinchenko albeit both of those players do have contracts expiring at the end of this season so that might be something we need to try and sort out before we do get into deadline day otherwise it might be a good idea to get some fresh faces in at left back if those players do not want to stay here our centre backs for the start of the season Saliba will play as a ball playing defender alongside Bamba and on the bench we do have a good backup in terms of someone who can cover both those centre back roles as well as that deep lying playmaker role in Kamara so he is on the bench and in terms of our midfield coot miners is in there alongside our new signing in Pelé and down a bit further the front four does pretty much pick itself Bakayo Saka out on the right wing we've got Martinelli out on the left the club captain Odegaard in the attacking midfield and up front it is Gabriel Jesus playing as a complete forward hopefully someone here at Arsenal can do that unlike what we had at Cardiff C last year where the players just lack the quality to try and do that under the various styles that we ended up using of course we did finish on this tiki taka style which is what we are going to start off with here at Arsenal apart from the fact we have just made one slight change we are playing for set pieces seeing as the board and the fans do want us to do that but that is what the first team squad does look like here going into this season with Arsenal and quite a strong bench as well with the likes of Zinchenko Kamara as well as Fabio Vieira as a backup to Martin Udegaard so it does mean going into the season that we are one of the favourites for this Premier League title, paying £4 to win it just in behind Man City and Liverpool with a decent drop back to the rest. Those other big teams like Newcastle, Chelsea, Tottenham 
and Manchester United, our former club, cut off all the way down in 14th. One of the main reasons that we did make the jump over to Arsenal, of course, these days, as mentioned, they are being managed by Mikel Arteta. So obviously we cut off quite a bit of that transfer activity in yesterday's episode. Our preseason did go pretty well. No overly convincing wins, but we did win all of our games once we did take over because it did happen off the back of that Club World Cup. So hopefully we can get off to a decent start here in the Premier League as well. And first up, we do take on Everton under new management with Unai Emery in charge. This is a team who only came up from the Championship last season, but we're in Europe as well off the back of winning the FA Cup. They had a decent season, managed to stay up, but they are a team who we should absolutely be beating here at Arsenal, especially with this one being at home. On the opening day, in terms of our squad going into this one, just the one injury concern, which you might have seen before, Francisco Trincao is in doubt with a fire strain, albeit, according to our medical staff, he can play 60 minutes. We might put him on the bench just in case is that backup to Martinelli on the left-hand side, but to be fair, we'll only use him if we absolutely need to. So I suppose you could say we're actually at full strength going into this one, but as I said, we'll try and leave Trincao on the bench if we can, and we'll come back shortly with the team sheets and the action on the opening day of the new Premier League season, our first game in charge at Arsenal as we take on Everton. And here are the team shoots for our first game in charge at Arsenal. There we are as we ran through before and also quite a strong bench. Patino over Sambi Laconga. What a waste of a transfer that was while we were still in the process of being appointed there. Uh, Everton, interesting to see they've still got Marco Staminic because he got transfer listed off the back of last season. The player that we did try and get to Cardiff at the start of the last one, but they are going to go with a 4-4-2. But this is a game we should be winning. Hopefully we can grab three points in our first game in charge. And as an early highlight in this one, a free kick in our favour. And already the passing looking quite crisp compared to what we did see at Cardiff. Now Kieran Tierney does get brought down there by Ruiz, albeit... I think that might have been just outside the box, but this could be a great chance early for us to get on the score sheet from the penalty spot. But as I said, I think this one might just be slightly outside. Indeed, that was the case, but it was a good area here for us to have a free kick. And we are going to try and put this one in. Udegaard picks out. Tomiyasu does hit the target, but Muruk does get in the way. So still nil all coming up to the 10-minute mark. And just past the 20 minute mark, yet another free kick. So we are indeed playing for set pieces. And it was the Atomiyasu who got a good head on the end of that. And that one came off the post, just seen near above my head. Cardiff City not off to a good start under life with Mikel Arteta. So that is disappointing against the team like Leicester. But we are still on the attack here. And Bakayo Saka does get in behind. He puts that one bottom left corner. I do suspect he might have just been a stride offside otherwise. That is pretty good and unexpected off the back of a free kick where this highlight did start. And the goal has been awarded, so I was caught out there a little bit. I thought the highlight would have mostly been about the free kick, but lovely pass that from Erdegaard. Must have just been onside, and he beats the Everton goalkeeper to be our first goal scorer here at Arsenal. Of course, it's the star boy Imba Kayo Sucker, of course, these days. A little bit older, and we go one the lap just past the 20-minute mark. And just past the half hour mark, yet again we start this one off with a free kick in our favour. So it does look like that might be something which happens a little bit more as we do play for set pieces here at Arsenal. Of course, we were supposed to be doing that at Cardiff, but I did just feel like it was just neutralising a little bit of our creativity. But with a team like Arsenal, hopefully they still get that despite the fact we are trying to play for those set pieces. But we're taking our time here to play out from the back and eventually the passing. Nice and crisp and Bakayo Saka! Gets in behind yet again. It's a quick fire double, of course, technically third goal of the season. That will get confusing because of that Club World Cup. But of course, it is his second in the game and in the Premier League season. And we go 2-0 up nice and early. And already this tiki taka style looks like it could be quite lethal to be fair. Their goalkeeper there for Everton should probably be doing a little bit better. But Bakayo Saka gets on the double early and puts us 2-0 up. And very shortly off the back of that second goal, it is now Everton here to get a chance to play out with a goal kick, but they pump it deep and Saliba does win that ball play. Nice pass there for Martinelli. It comes crashing off that top right corner, and Everton do clear it out for a throw, which we will get shown, but early doors here looking very dangerous with this 4-2-3-1 tiki-taka style last year under their previous manager these days. 
at Manchester City. Pretty sure, based on what he likes to do, they were playing a vertical tiki taka. That's what we did at Cardiff at the start of the season as well, but in the end, did go to a tiki taka because it did just work a little bit better by the looks of it through our results and through just what was happening in the match engine as well. But we were on the attack there. They headed away to Everton, but we still do keep the ball now. Bamba just holds things here, plays that one back to Saliba. Pere played some good passes so far. Now we get it to Jesus. Coop Miners tries to go over the top. Somehow gets it back, back to Pele. Martinelli over the top for Saka. Yet again, we'll rocket that one top left corner. And it's a first half hat trick for Bakayo Saka. And we are 3 0 up a few minutes shy of half time. And already it looks like this tactic will certainly get the job done over these weaker teams. It will be interesting to see how it gets on in our second game today against Everton. But Saka has hit the ground running nice and early this season. First half hat trick to put us 3 0 up. And just before we do head into half time here, we're in the second minute of injury time. That is a throw in here for Everton, who have been right on the back foot throughout this first half. You to register a single shot, I believe. That's a good slide tackle there from Martinelli. Just a little bit worried for a second there. It might be a car, but thankfully he timed it well. Play puts the ball into the mix a bit. Nathan will block that. They try and play that deep, but Saliba wins it in the air. Erdegaard out to Kieran Tierney. Just outside the box, plays that one back for Coop Miners. It is Saka yet again squares that one for Martin Erdegaard. Bakayo Saka's fingerprints are all over this one. And it is going to be 4-0 going into half time. This could be a really heavy defeat for Everton on the opening day of the season. As we now have a four goal lead in Saka. As to his hat trick there with a nice assist. Squares that one nicely and Erdegaard just pokes that home into the bottom left corner, and that is a brilliant first half in charge here at Arsenal, and it should mean that we pick up all three points at the end of this one, as you can see indeed Everton, no shots in that first half, we have well and truly dominated this one, all those stats in our favour, and obviously the way things are going, no changes needed, we'll get things back underway with a very nice 4-0 lead. And it's taken 10 minutes for us to get our first highlight here of the second half. We tried to hit that ball away, but Everton here might get their first attacking highlight of this game off the back of doing absolutely nothing in that first half. Doyle on a yellow card starts to cut and field plays that one back for Kutunik. We're pressing quite well, but Kutunik does find some space. Edward Stamanik, that's a poor read there, I think, from Bamba. Harrison gets him behind, puts it away. We are waiting for a VAR check, but I believe he was onside. It's a poor read there. From Bamba in defence, he came out for some reason. And despite the fact I think that might have been their first shot on goal of the entire game, their first attempt, it does go in the back of the net, as you saw Bamba there. Comes out of line for no real reason and opens up a big gap for Harrison to put that one away. And Everton grab what will hopefully only be a consolation goal early in the second half. They make it 4-1. And just past the hour, mate, we get a highlight starting here with Jesus in possession Right on the centre circle, now some of our players start to come forward, so obviously that was off the back of a defensive clearance. Now Kieran Tierney finds some space here down this left-hand side, takes his time on the ball a bit, unleashes a shot, forces a decent save there out of Mulek, but he keeps it at 4-1. And nearly inside the last 20 minutes of this one, I think we are going to take some players off now with a quite comfortable 4-1 lead. We should be able to hold on to this off the back of that good first half effort, so we're going to take off some players on those deeper yellow hearts, so it will be Singo coming on for Tomoyasu, also Zinchenko for Kieran Tierney. We might also bring on Ugarte for Coop Miners. And with our last substitution, I think for now, we might give our new signing Manuel Belea some game time off the bench in place of Gabriel Jesus. That's four of our subs used with that free goal lead and just over 20 minutes left. And just inside the last 10 minutes of this one, we're going to make our last substitution. We'll take off the player of the match, at least the player who should be player of the match, Bakayo Saka with a hat-trick, and an assist, one of our new signings, Fabio Carvalho, will come on for him, still 4-1 up. And we're just entering injury time in this one, it's been a pretty quiet second half for us in terms of attack, but thankfully we did all the damage in that first half, a little bit frustrating, we did concede that only shot on target from Everton, but to be fair, it was from a defensive mystery, but still not going to be too disappointed about that when we pick up a win, by four goals to one, and overall, that was a very good performance, albeit the second half. It did just slip a little bit in terms of the performance, but that is an encouraging result. 
and hopefully we can also play like that away from home against a much better team according to the bookies in Newcastle United also between now and then. Hopefully our third choice striker out of Brazil will join us but that is a brilliant start. We open the season with three points at home off the back of a 4-1 win over Everton. And a few days off the back of that opening day win indeed that striker that we did have in the process of signing during yesterday's episode towards the end of it has now joined us. That does mean that just over £15 million does come out of our transfer budget of £21 million. So it does probably mean this might be our last signing, as I said, unless we do get rid of one of those left-backs whose contracts are expiring at the end of this season. Do need to check if they are going to sign one of those before we do get into deadline day in tomorrow's episode. Also, Gabriel Jesus has a contract expiring as well. We'll see if we can renew that one as well off the back. Of today's episode, but we are going to sign Temujin Florenzano out of Palmeiras. His release clause was £15 million. He is a quite promising striker who can also cover both wings. Two and a half star current ability, five star potential, and of course, being 21 years and under, we don't need to fill a registration spot for him for the Premier League this season. And also, he's probably going to be third choice for the first team and play quite a few minutes for the under 21s anyway. 50 appearances for Palmeiras, 9 goals in his career to date. Hopefully he does a bit better in terms of strike rate here at Arsenal. But there is our third choice striker, Temujin Florenzano. And we've made our way forward to kickoff time for the second game of today's episode. And our second game of the season, quite a big one as we are going to take on Newcastle, who were predicted to finish fourth on the table, albeit with significantly longer odds than us here at Arsenal, who were predicted to finish third. There you can see the Premier League table from the opening day, unfortunately for our former team in Cardiff, they got off to a shocking start. A 3-0 defeat away at Leicester. Not a good start there. For Mikel Arteta, it looks like the only player who played well was Ina Sully. Also interesting to see they have started Jashari alongside Al Bloshi in the midfield as well as Nia Kate at centre-back alongside Bayam. So some interesting selection decisions there from Mikel, but not a good performance there even though XG-wise. They did actually perform a little bit better. Also, Fagundo Falius off of the bench did pick up a late red card, but I'm not too sure if that had much impact. But a poor performance there, not helped by an early own goal from Jashari. So Cardiff at the wrong end of the table early. Maybe we've left them in a spot of bullet, but we are about to take on Newcastle, who did actually suffer a defeat on the first day of the season. It must have been a 1-0 loss by the looks of it, and that was away at Leeds United, so based on that, hopefully, this is a game yet again we can walk away with all three points from, but certainly a sterner opposition than we took on in Everton, especially away from home, and with Zinedine Zidane in charge and coming into this game. All of our players are fit this time. Francisco Trincao is available without that injury concern, so we might actually use him off of the bench today, but it will be exactly the same starting 11. We'll come back shortly and run through the team sheets and hopefully continue a good start as we take on Newcastle from St. James's Park. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. There are Newcastle. They are playing that 4-3-3. Interesting face there in Gwen Doozy in the defensive midfield as well as Langley, our former goalkeeper both here and at Cardiff. On the bench there we are, as I said, exactly the same as we were on the opening day and hopefully we can pick up a very similar result. And just under a minute into this one we get the first highlight to throw in here for Newcastle inside of our half. They try and play that ball over the top I believe for Alexander Isaac who apparently has quite a good goal scoring record against Arsenal to be fair. I think that was also the case against us at Cardiff but thankfully there Newcastle did get on the attack briefly. We just snuff it out and now Aaron's tries to play that one over the top. Martinelli does win the ball back. It's a little bit helter skelter here. And there is the Georgian winger who heads that one away. But Tomiyasu will tidy things up. And now we get some slick passing going. Tomiyasu starts to make his way down this right hand side. Can he put a ball into the mix of Martinelli? Far post. And Jesus gets in the way. But unfortunately, that one comes off the post. So a good early chance. But it does remain nil all. And shortly off the back of that, there is a throw in this time in our favour. Odegaard plays that one back. For Carantini, picks out Martinelli just on the edge of the box. Will get a shot off, but that is a very weak one. So still nil all, just under five minutes into this. And 10 minutes off the back of those first few highlights. Now down the other end here for a Newcastle corner. We head that away, but Kulosevsky is there 
to tidy things up now. Libby Kakache, who was in the team of the year last season for the Premier League, plays that one back to Chalaba. Nice ball over the top there. That trophy Fana gets in behind. It's messy, but thankfully, before the Georgian winger can get on the end of that one, we clear it away for a corner. So that was nearly a goal there to Newcastle to open the scoring in this one. Now they have a corner, which Simons puts into the mix. It's good to see there too. Cardiff being Sheffield United. We will have another corner here for Newcastle as we head that one away. And just as I say that, Sheffield do pick up an equaliser, but Simons will float this one into the mixer. O'Reilly gets his head on the end of that, but thankfully Ramsdale with the save. So still nil all at the 15 minute mark. And just show the half hour, mate, we get our next title in this one. Still nil all, but Newcastle have certainly been on the front foot, albeit that might be because they we have gone balanced with our mentality as suggested by our assistant manager. We do get the ball back there. Thanks to Prude. Plays that one over the top for Martinelli. We'll pick out Erdegaard. It gets through the hands of Tobias in goal for Newcastle. And Erdegaard will open the scoring with his second goal of the Premier League season. And despite being on the back foot stats-wise, we do take a 1-0 lead here at St. James's Park. Good work there from Pelé. Gets the honky assist. And it is Martinelli who will play that one in for Erdegaard. And we go 1-0 up just shy of the half-hour mark. And a few minutes off the back of that opening goal and us picking up a few yellow cards there to Kieran Tenney and to Pule is Newcastle here with the ball from a free kick. And Kakache makes his way down that left-hand side yet again. Just takes his time here on the ball. Picks out O'Reilly. Saliba, it's very messy there inside the box. The Georgian winger with a safety effort from Ramsdale. It falls back to him. Puts it over him into the path of Kulisevsky. It's a messy goal to concede, but Newcastle have grabbed an equaliser. And to be fair, based on the run of play, as you can see, with that match momentum, hard not to argue, they don't deserve going into the sheds here. With a draw, at least, we nearly avoided that goal, but in the end, good little chip there to set that one up for Kulisevsky. And it is one all 10 minutes shy of halftime. And that is it for the first half in the second game of the season. We have certainly been on the back foot in this one, but despite that, we do go into the shed still locked up at one all, although it could have been a little bit better, of course, after taking the lead, we're going to take off Tenny here for Zinchenko on that yellow card. I think we'll leave Pelé out there because he is actually playing quite well. But Kieran Tenny, I think we can replace with Zinchenko. Not much of a drop-off between those two players. But maybe playing on this balance mentality does mean we are just not dominating the game as much as we were against Everton. Albeit that isn't too unexpected with Newcastle being a much better team. But not doing too badly here at halftime despite the fact we are on the back foot, although we are going to tell our guys we're far from pleased with that effort. Not being creative or positive enough, and hopefully that gives them a bit of a lift going into the second half. We'll get things back underway, locked up at one all. And about 10 minutes into the second half, we get the first highlight here. It's a throw in our favour right on the halfway line on that right-hand side. And Bamba here will take his time on the ball. Plays that one forward to Perret. Martinelli plays that one back to Bamba. Hopefully can find some space here down this left-hand side, especially now as it is, I believe, Martinelli there finding quite a bit of space. In fact, it is Zinchenko. Eventually gets the ball, starts to cut inside, but plays that one back to Bamba. Probably got the ball there a little bit later than ideal, but we now try and build from the back yet again. Saliba up to Coop Miners. Nice ball yet again over for Zinchenko right on the edge of the box. It falls back there for Perret. Plays that one back to Coop Miners. Unleashes a shot in that one. Clips the top of the crossbar. So a decent early chance for us here in the second half, but still one all. And off the back of that, it is a goal kick here for Newcastle as they do try and play out from the back, albeit at the moment we're doing a decent job of putting some pressure on them. And Saka there does win the ball back for us. Plays that one over for Bamba and finds Zinchenko again in some space there. At left back, back for Bamba. He will pick out Saliba and hopefully we can grab our lead back early in the second half. We find Saka, but a bit of a loose touch there. And Libby Kakache is on the ball here for Newcastle. Makes his way inside the box. That is somewhat of an effort, but thankfully it is going to be claimed by Ramsdale, albeit it does go out for a Newcastle corner. So maybe this will still end up being a decent chance for the opposition, but thankfully Ramsdale does come out and claim that one. And we're just about to hit the hour mark in this game, albeit this highlight is going to continue. Martinelli wins that one in the air, but Chalaba will play that one forward. Simons back to Gwen Doozy. Good interception there from Erdegaard. Can't quite keep it though. 
And now Newcastle will try and play out from the back. It's an absolute miss. Oh, it's an absolute howler from the goalkeeper. And Gabriel Jesus will tuck that one away. It's a goal out of absolutely nothing. And somehow, despite being on the back foot for most of this game, we are in front 2-1 with a half hour left. We put just enough pressure on them here. And they just bottled it at the back to Bias. Thump that one straight into his centre back. It floats up for Jesus, who catches the goalkeeper out. 2-1 Arsenal at the hour mark. And about five minutes off the back of that goal, which did put us back in front. We're going to make a few substitutions here. A few players on yellow cards, on red hearts as well. And average rating, so Martinelli can come off for Trincao. Carvalho will come on for Saka with that yellow card. And also Kamara for Pelé. Same reasoning for that. And we'll see if that can just make sure we hold on to this lead in these last 25 minutes. And 10 minutes off the back of that previous substitution, we are going to make our last one now because Udegaard is down to a red heart. He's got a goal in both games in today's episode, but Fabio Vieira will come off the bench for him with our last substitution. Still 2-1 up. And with 10 minutes left to go in this game, we get our next decent highlight. There was one earlier off the back of our last substitution, but it was just a shot from Carvalho in an offside position. So I thought we'd cut that one out, but Carvalho does find Tomiyasu here down this right-hand side back in for Fabio. Now Coop Miners. Plays the ball over the top. Trinkau gets his head on the end of that one. Just goes over the bar. So we are still 2-1 up. And do have a throw in here inside our own half. Thankfully, just do enough there to keep it. Now Vera plays that one back to Kamara. Now Zinchenko plays it forward to Vera. Try and get something going here down this left-hand side. But a bit loose there from Trinkau. Joe Gomez will tidy that one up. Poor header there from Bamba. And great chance for Detro for Fana. But that is a big save there. From Aaron Ramsdale, we nearly give Newcastle an equaliser inside the last 10 minutes, albeit they will still have a corner, which Simons is going to put into the mix. They go far post here, looking for O'Reilly, but thankfully we do deal with that, and a good tackle there from Zinchenko should mean we hold on to our 2-1 lead for now. And we're entering the last few minutes of this one. Not too sure how much injury time yet, though, because there is one more highlight here. On the 89 minute mark, yet again knocking it about in defense. This time it's Saliba with a poor pass. Yet again, it is a good chance for Fafana, but this time it is Bamba with a big covering tackle. So, two big chances there we have gifted to Newcastle. Thankfully, though, Fafana has somewhat stuffed both of them up, albeit they do still have the ball here on the edge of the box. Joe Gomez unleashes a rocket, but thankfully that one comes off the top side of the crossbar. And it looks like we are going to hold on here for a 2-1 win. Overall, that game in the end actually ended up being quite even. We certainly played better in the second half than we did in the first half. But Newcastle, with some big chances, we gifted them late. Thankfully, it does not come back to bite us. And we pick up three points, even though that was nowhere near as convincing as the opening day when we did host Everton. But that was somewhat expected Newcastle. A much better side. Both teams, it looks like, hit the woodwork a few times in that one. But that is the perfect start to the season. Those are three big points for us away at a team like Newcastle United. And that means for now, we are on top of the table off the back of that 2 1 win at St. James's Park. So a good start for us here at Arsenal in today's episode. Two wins from two. A very convincing one at home over Everton, backed up with a slightly scratchy one there. Away at Newcastle, we've gone for quite a bit, as you can see, towards deadline day. There's reason for that, which we will reveal shortly. But there is the table. Man City have gone above us, thanks to goal differential. But them, us, and Aston Villa are the only three teams to win both of the opening games. Cardiff City not doing well early on, so that is a little bit concerning with Mikel Arteta in charge. But the reason that we have come back is that we've actually hit the draw for the Champions League league phase. So I thought we'd actually update you guys on this because we might come back for one of these games in tomorrow's episode. And also, we can have a bit of a sneaky on what Cardiff's draw looks like and see which team does have the better draw for the Champions League this season. Obviously, Arsenal much more heavily favoured in that competition than Cardiff will be, especially off the back of their start in the Premier League. But this is what our fixtures look like for this upcoming season. It's a little bit tough, honestly. The teams that we've got from Pot 1 and Pot 2 are pretty good. Maybe Real Sociedad aside, but our openers 
uh, very tough, albeit thankfully they are at home against those pot one and two teams in Bayern Munich and Juventus, but those are two big games early on for us in the league phase of the Champions League this season, so we could get behind early if we are not on our game. Thankfully off the back of that though, we take on Apoel and Copenhagen, but then a few more tough games away at Sociedad and Dortmund before hopefully we can get back on track if needed with those games against Bodo Glimt and Celtic on those final two match days, but certainly there's a few tasty ties for us in the Champions League this season, including our first one against Bayern Munich, which will probably be included in tomorrow's episode, but just quickly we'll go and check out who Cardiff got in the Champions League this season. And here is who Cardiff got, and I would argue their draw might be just slightly easier than ours. They've got Trabzon Spore and Ajax up first. Those are two games I'd imagine they could probably win, even though they are away from home, albeit under their new manager in Mikel Arteta. That might not actually be the case then off the back of that. A really big game in Wales as they host PSG. Obviously, they won't be favoured for that one. Or the one following probably as they do take on RB Leipzig. That's interesting as the RB Leipzig manager was actually one of the favourites to take over at Cardiff before Arteta did get appointed. Then they've got a few more winnable games against Ligia Warszawa and AEK. You could also argue the final match day is quite winnable as they take on Red Bull Salzburg, but they do have a trip to Camp Nou to take on Barcelona as well, so that is quite a decent draw there for Cardiff, a few interesting ties as well, as some quite winnable ones, hopefully they can make their way at the very least into that top 24 and make their way into the knockout playoff thing that does happen in the league phase, but I would say there, not too much difference in the draws, maybe even Cardiff, with a slightly weaker one, albeit obviously with them having a bit of a weaker squad than us here at Arsenal, maybe that is going to mean that it evens out just a little bit, but hopefully they can still make their way through to the knockout phase in some form, and of course here at Arsenal, we are going to be expected to go quite deep in this competition, but I think that will do it for today's episode, two good wins in our Champions League draw for this upcoming season. If you enjoyed that first episode for us here in charge at Arsenal, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and like the look of this series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well, so you do not miss out when a new episode does drop. We'll come back tomorrow if there's anything that does happen on deadline day. We'll start off with that. As I said, we've got Zinchenko and Kieran Tierney, whose contracts are expiring, and they are the two players who don't want to extend them. So we might need to do a little bit of work there to try and add some players in that left back area if we do get rid of them before we do potentially lose them on a free come the end of the season. So there could be some business there on deadline day. I think we'll play those Premier League games off the back of that against Leicester and Watford off camera. And we'll come back and play those two games in the middle of September. We'll take on Bayern Munich in our first game in the league phase of the Champions League, of course, Bayern Munich usually a team which Arsenal struggle against in the Champions League. And off the back of that, we will take on Brighton, who were quite plucky in the Premier League last season, just finished below us at Cardiff. And we're inside that top four for quite a while during last season as well. So that could be a trickier game than it does look on paper. So we'll come back for those two games in tomorrow's episode, as well as potentially some deadline day business, including some left back action potentially. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.